and I, 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 I speak to a lot of Singaporean founders or tech leads all the time, but I told them about Sigma School's ability to churn out entry level. Huh? So this is not like crazy good guys, these are entry level guys who are able to build your know, entry level requirements. They got so excited about the pitch and they, they straight away sign up to be our hiring partner. Welcome to the iSearch Podcast. Today we have Derek D, the founder of Sigma School on the show. So today I'll be discussing with Derek on the number one skill set to develop so you can work remotely with global companies. So welcome to the show, Derek. Hey, thank you so much, Benjamin. Really happy and it's my great pleasure to be over here in this session with you. All right. So let's go ahead and spill the beans. So in your opinion, what is the most valuable skill set in the current market and why? I think right, um, this is the question that I, I, I literally ask myself this question every single day. And I think I have the answer to this, right? The answer is there's two things, the ability to learn fast and the ability to communicate very well to your audience, to your stakeholders, to anybody to communicate well, right? Because if you ask me, I think someone who's able to master these two things can go very far in the career. Think about it. No one school or course or university program will be able to give you all the skill sets you need. For example, in the context of um, technology, technology changes a lot and the school may teach you things like um, Java, Python or whatever, they, they will choose a tech stack. But the industry in, in the real world, you will be needed to learn a lot of different frameworks and libraries and technologies on the job itself, right? So that requires you to just learn on a job, right? And in the context of, let's say, marketing, learning Facebook ads will not be enough. You need to know in today's very competitive world, you need to know the omni-channel approach to marketing. So if you're putting all your eggs in the Facebook ads basket, you will be um, struggling to pivot when, and, and you're going to be at the mercy of Facebook in, in many ways, the, the Facebook's um, algorithms, right? So instead, I would say um, understanding you know, fundamentally how something works. And once you know fundamentally how it works, you get to learn up very fast. And you know, wherever you go, regardless of what role it is, it's always good to, you know, be able to pick up stuff fast and on the job. And, you know, you know, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. I mean, being the founder of Sigma School and you provide like online education on coding, do you think like coding is actually like the, the most uh, valuable skill set that people can have? I, I, I think coding is one skill set that unlocks a lot of doors for you because the world currently, I, I like to tell this story, right, about how I made my decision to go into code. It's really true an event where I go to, a, it was a VC event. And so in this event, uh, we were organizing it. It was a kind of like a co-founder or like an investor pitching event. I was in VC in the past, right? And um, in that event, everyone was given a tag. So uh, a, a colored tag, right? So I think investors got green color, tech people got like red color, and um, founders got like some other color, blue color, I think. So the point is, uh, in that event itself, it opened up my eyes to how crazily high demand tech is to the world today and to founders and to the, the whole startup ecosystem, right? I could see people just surrounding tech people. For every one tech guy, there was probably like five startup founders and, you know, I mean, in fact, more. One tech guy, there was like seven to eight startup founders surrounding him. And through that event, I got to meet a lot of very smart guys who was either, you know, making good money, just working at home remotely with their two hands and a laptop. I met a guy also who was building like a software as a service, a SaaS tool, a simple SaaS tool that solved one, one problem. I think it was in, in the video editing scene, right? Solved one problem and he did it all on his own. A one, one or two man shop, very small team, but making, you know, hundreds of thousands every month in recurring revenue passively. I was like, damn, like, what other skill set gives me this ability? So yeah, tech is definitely important. But you know, when you asked me just now why I didn't say tech, it was really because maybe I was, I'm, I'm too in the zone. So I, I, I know too much about technology today that I, I appreciate some of the other soft skills a lot more. Like, uh, you know, being able to communicate, being able to learn fast. These are the things that will put you ahead of other tech people. Hmm. Okay. So actually, I feel that coding cannot be intimidating and also technically difficult to learn. So what are your thoughts on this? Coding is difficult, right? If you think of it, I, I completely agree with you. It's tough. And um, you know, some people would say that coding is not for everybody, but I don't agree. I think that everyone, as long as you have a perfectly normal IQ, normal functioning brain, or you know, you, you, can, you can do maths. I put it this way, if you can do maths, you can, you can code, right? But you see, the thing is, it's not a prerequisite. It's more like coding fundamentally is the ability to solve problems. When you see a challenge, you think of ways to solve it. It's a muscle in your brain that you have to train, right? You don't, you don't just one day wake up and say, hey, I'm a coder. No, it's something that comes over time. It's like going to the gym, right? You don't just lift one weight and become like a buff ass, uh, 
you know, bodybuilder, but it's something that you have to put in repetitive work over a period of time to then build that programming muscle, as I call it, right? Yes, some people may be more um, talented, some people may be less talented, some people may be, you know, from you know, less engineering background where they don't, they were not designed to think um, computationally, right? And I, I would say I was one of them. I came from a background where, you know, honestly, in the past, I didn't know how to code. I, you know, in, in, your, in your primary school or, you know, high school, you had computer sessions where you do some basic IT stuff. I was always that kid who was left behind, right? I was that bad. And then, you know, my, my background, obviously, I wasn't from an engineering background. I was from a finance background. Uh, I was good with numbers, but I wasn't really good with thinking and solving problems step by step. So that ability is something that's able to be honed. You can train that ability by solving problems and, uh, yeah. I think definitely doable, definitely doable. Um, mm. It's hard, but I think doable. If with the right support, the right practice, it's doable. Yeah, I mean, for a beginner uh, who have not done any coding before and wish to learn, what is like the expected time frame that you think this person can start to pick up so I that he can start his own project? Okay, that's a very good question. And that's one I get asked a lot all the time, right? For a beginner to pick up technology, to code and you know build, a project, let's say something like, um, let's talk about Airbnb, something like Airbnb. You're gonna need a front end, you need a back end to store data, to store authentication, you need to deploy it somewhere, uh, you need someone to design it, right? You need to integrate the front end and the back end, and probably you have some other third party tools that you have to integrate the APIs with. So if you ask me, I would say, um, if you ask me, right, we're not talking things like three, four years in a university degree, definitely you don't need that. Let's just use boot camps as a very good metric. All the boot camps in the world, they choose this magical number of three months to four months. That's assuming you do it full time. So yeah, I think that's very doable. I've, I've, you know, there's no one size fits all um, answer to this because a lot of people, as I know, drop out of boot camps as well because three months might be too intensive for them. They're like, shit, I can't do this. This is too difficult. They lose confidence and they, they fall to a place that's even worse you know, they, they lose all their confidence and they say, you know what, coding is not for me, they give up. So the way I want to approach this is instead of setting a hard time on it, right, it's really going on your own pace and asking yourself how much time can you consistently spend every day. If someone with an average IQ and an average, you know, you know with zero background in coding, um, I would say um, if you can put in eight to 10 hours every single day, right, you should be able to build something solid, a full stack web application in around three to four months. Wouldn't be a problem. That's if you can commit the eight to 10 hours, right? Not everyone can do that. It's a very hard thing. I did yeah, that especially myself. Especially people honestly, with full-time job, you cannot yes. like, commit so much. So probably I would say that the expectation is like instead of three to four months, it's probably like five to six months to be really competent. Correct. Oh, in fact, even more, maybe even more, mm. right? Um, some people spend like, you know, if you have a full-time job, how are you going to spend time? By the time you get home, after the jam, have dinner, you have like, you're so tired, you have one, two hours every day. It's good. It's still progress, right? So I always tell people it's fine. Even if it's one hour, if it's two hours, it's completely fine as long as you continuously learn, learn, learn. And you see, the point here is to not just learn for the sake of learning. It's learn for the sake of building. Have an end goal in mind and think okay, I want to build Airbnb. What do you need to build it, right? Okay, I have the login. I have, the, I have a lot of um, you know, places that I need to upload the photos. I need to have an admin panel for people to upload. I need to have a view for um, you know, uh, the, the landlords and a view for the users, right? Think about this and try and build it up. And whenever you're stuck, refer to documentation, learn, repeat. And yeah, you know, that, that, that whole, the whole gist of it. Okay. Okay, so for entrepreneurs who have the idea of an app in their mind already, they want to build this app should they self-learn how to code or should they hire like an external programmer? What are like the, the pros and cons of each? Cool. I, I think um, for me, I'm a firm believer of work with your strengths, right? So if your strength is in talking and pitching and, you know, selling an idea, go ahead, focus on that, right? Um, today, there's a lot of no-code tools that allows you to build up rapid MVPs uh, like software or Bubble. These tools allow you to build a lot of stuff and then an MVP, which is a minimum viable product level, to just launch it out and, and onboard users. So you don't even need to code, right? Or you could partner up with uh, people like Sigma School, where we have a lot of students. You can get access to our students, where our students will help you build your product up for you at a obviously discounted price. It's kind of like, you know, going to a hair salon and getting a student to cut your hair, that kind of thing. Or you could um, learn it up on your own, but um, it depends on your strength, right? If you are someone who's able to learn up fast, you have uh, some programming background in the past. We had students, with some experience in the past, they actually learned up and within one month, they got a job. 
That's not because we are a superior school. No, it's because this guy so happened to be, you know, um, they have some background already. And this is the same logic that applies to all boot camps. There's no magical boot camp in the world that suddenly can get you a job. It still boils down to how much time you put in and what's your level at that point in time. So um, if you're saying in the context of an entrepreneur, yes, um, going to an agency is an option. I would say if, okay, to summarize this point, right? If you want uh, fast and cheap, either you partner up with a CTO or you go to someone like Sigma School where we have students to work on it for you. If you want good, okay, uh, good work, you have to pay good money. If you don't have good money, you have to find a way to get good money, which is to build something basic, go to investors, get money, then hire people. Or finally, give some equity out and get a very good CTO on board, you know, and, and, and build it and build a product for you. Mm, okay. So, I mean, okay, let's say, assuming that they go for the second option, which is to hire programmers to do it for them. So what are some tips for them to find good programmers so that they don't waste like a lot of money and time? One thing that's very common among early stage tech entrepreneurs is they don't really know what exactly they want and um, they often get burned by tech. Because uh, if you think of it, good, good software people always get hired very fast. And they get hired to Singapore or Australia or wherever and they get paid because it's, it's a job that's able to be done remotely anyways, right? So good tech people are hard to find. So if you hire a tech person to do it for you, you're obviously going to be paying a significant amount of money to, to, to sustain this team, right? So I would say in, in terms of looking for a good programmer, you, you always need to look for, like I mentioned, the two most important things, their ability to learn and their ability to communicate and work in the team. You can't go wrong from this because someone can come in knowing X, Y, Z knowledge, right? Because maybe they have spent four years in the past um, learning XYZ uh, tech, right? But this other guy who doesn't know XYZ, but this guy, this other guy knows ABC. But this guy who knows ABC spent three months only and he's able to build something equivalent level as Mr. XYZ. So you need to take factor in that, that person's ability to learn. And I think one thing that can really help this is having a, a, a small case study for them to, of, of course, solve first. Right, something new, not something they know already because it's unfair because some people have learned it before already, right? But in the job, I would say that, yeah, I spoke to so many developers today, I would say that 90% of developers actually learn on the job. You don't just learn by, you know, going to uni or, or, or whatever. Yes, you learn the basics there, yes, but on the job, you get to, you need to integrate with so many other software tools today uh, to be able to build a solid product, right? So give these guys some, a new challenge that they've never done before. Ask them to learn it up, see what they can give you in that short span of, let's say, seven days and test their learning ability. And that is what, how you define a good developer, someone who's able to learn well, learn fast. And that's la layer one, that's a base, and then obviously communication, right? It's a developer who can't communicate is, uh, yeah, they can demand a salary, but um, you know, oftentimes it's those who are able to sell themselves and talk well um, you know, with those soft skills that will actually go far, especially in a remote environment, right? Communication is more important than ever today. Okay, because I think that for an entrepreneur who does not know anything about coding, right, it's a, it's a bit challenging to like hire programmers because they don't, they can't differentiate like which one is a good one, which one is a bad one. So yeah, so how how can entrepreneurs do that? Entrepreneurs want to let's say find a good developer, right? And yeah, and with no coding like... experience, la, So they 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 don't want they want to bypass like the the coding phase and also to hire a programmer to build the app for them, but then they. The struggle is how do I evaluate whether this programmer is, is a competent one? I, I think, like I mentioned, the programmer doesn't need to have any skill sets. They need to, the only skill set they need to have is fundamentally computational thinking, right? Like I mentioned, give them a task, let them solve mm. the task. If they're able to solve that task good and fast and writing, you know, you don't need to even bother the code is clean yet at this point in time, as long as they can deliver, you say, even as a non-coder, you say, hey, uh, Mr. Programmer, I want to work with you. Can you recreate this website for me in one week? I don't care how you do it. Can you do it for me? Right? If he's able to do it, it means he can do it. And I can tell you now today, right? there's nothing a programmer cannot do. Okay? In terms of technical skills, right? there's nothing a programmer cannot do. Most things out there, they can do. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time because it's just a lot of layers of problems to be solved. If they are able to solve problems, they can solve it. It's just a matter of time. So a good developer will, that's why there's this fallacy, there's this concept called a 10 times developer, where this guy, you, these two guys, you pay the same amount of salary, right? The 10 times developer can solve the same problem 10 times faster than the other one. You, you know what I'm saying? And so, so, which also means that you're actually paying 10 times more for the, the, other, the other guy. Okay. And in the world um, of development, yeah. 
Yeah, got it. So can I say like this? Let's say my project, I have uh, 15 parts. So I just give this developer to do one part first. And instead of just giving one developer, I maybe like I give three developers to do this one part and see which developer that can communicate the best with me and also which yes. developers like the deliver the fastest and also the and also efficient in their yes. deliverables. La. So that's right. only the, best, the best work. With, the remaining parts, uh, that's what you're... Yes, that's say. correct. That's mm. correct. You, you okay. as the product lead, right? The product owner, you will need to be able to... Uh, most projects break down because of a lack, in, lack of communication. So as a product lead, you always need to be able to um, inspire and also deliver your message in terms of your requirements very well. Don't say things like, hey, I want uh, you know this website, that, like Airbnb, just make me a clone. Like that. Look, don't say things like that. Actually break it down. What does it entail? You know, login logout page, you need to draw the whole wire wireframes. Everything needs to be very clear, documentation. Then when things are clear, developer can get the job done very well. Mm, okay, got it. And uh, where's the best place to hire programmers? <laughs> uh, so I, I've, I personally use a lot of different places. You can you go to Facebook groups, you can go to LinkedIn, you can, um, but I think one of the best ones are just really just reaching out to people directly through LinkedIn or Facebook. When you see people writing stuff, when you see people commenting, right? Uh, I personally, what I've done is I just, I just straight up drop them a message. And oftentimes, the best ones are, you know, the ones that you get like this. Because, yeah, yeah, because, because, yeah, it's pretty much it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Or, or you can, you can come, come over to Sigma School and get our students here because we focus on tech skills and soft skills as well for both sides. Mm. How many students do you have currently? For Currently, Sigma School, we have launched for in the past two months. We're still very, very new. We have uh, 30 students still learning with us currently. Only 30, so not, not a lot, but we've got a lot of signups. So we're still in the middle of, in, in, in the progress of really identifying each student's strengths and really understanding what are the company's needs. That, so the way we work is we match them to companies right after they graduate. So each student may or may not go through a slightly different um, program at the end of it just to um, Give them that extra edge when it goes to you know the, the when when they go to the job application phase. Okay, so for people who wish to learn coding with Sigma School and they sign up with you, so does it mean that you will guarantee that they will find a job after they complete the whole course? So so if you think of um, how universities or boot camps work, is they you pay them a fee and mm -hmm. um, they give you training, and once you've graduated, then they they just say you know goodbye. Right? Yeah. The way Sigma School works is we, we want you to succeed and we are sharing the risk with you. Uh, in the future, we're going to explore a, a certain model where you don't even pay a single cent to start. But today for us, we say we don't take your risk for you, we share the risk with you. That, what that means is you have to pay a certain amount upfront and obviously that amount is going to be cheaper. I'm going to talk about how we innovate on the learning system to reduce our cost. And by reducing our cost, it allows us to give you a lower fee and also a job guarantee, right? So we reduce the cost and you learn through the whole thing. And once you're done with it, we will match you to companies. And for whatever reason, if you cannot get a job after you graduate, we're going to assist you, right? A full on assistance for, you know, for, for two years. We're going to assist you. If you really can get a job, we give you a refund. Yep full refund, complete refund, if someone cannot get a job. We're that confident because we know how in-demand tech is today and we have connections with companies abroad, right? If you think of it, uh, let's just say, let's just talk about our neighbor, Singapore. If a Singaporean business owner wants to hire a developer, he could obviously hire a Singaporean for four or five K and obviously the, 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 the tech, tech shortage now is very crazy, so it could go even higher than that. Or he could come over here and hire Malaysian developers, maybe a bit more junior, but for let's say one thousand pound or oh, one thousand dollars, right? So I think it makes sense for the Singapore. He's having like a you know, three to four times savings um, just on this level. Hmm. Okay. So to wrap up, is there anything else that you would like to share with audience before we go? I think um, if any one of you here, you're, if you're considering a career in technology, if or if you're considering a path where you learn tech to build a startup to start freelancing, to get a job or, you know, or to, 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 to start working remotely or just to automate anything, anything boring in your life. Technology is that one thing that unlocks all this potential for you. Um, so definitely try learning on your own first, right? Go to, uh, go to, you know, blogs or go read, read up blogs, go to things like Code Academy or Free Code Camp or YouTube videos. Look for the free learning materials and start learning that first. Some people um, are able to just 
leverage all these free materials and go very far with it. Some people can do it, maybe at a longer time, but some people definitely can do it, right? Um, in fact, most programmers are self-taught. But if you ever need help, and you know, obviously you don't, you probably wouldn't need a full-time senior PhD guy teaching you, right? But if you need assistance from a mentor who's in the industry, in you know, top startups, if you need accountability with a group of friends learning together with you, if you need some directions in terms of what actually is the demand in real-world companies, what technologies do they work with, and how can you sh have the shortest amount of time, uh, you know, you know, sh use the shortest path to go straight to the job, then definitely consider someone like Sigma School where, you, we, and, and the best part is we give you a full refund if you don't get a job, right? So I think we're on a mission to really revolution, revolutionize and change the way education is done, starting from Malaysia and you know, for, for the whole world. And I think uh, we would appreciate if we can get as many people who are interested in technology as possible. Mm. Okay, this question is optional, but would you be able to share like, how's the pricing like currently? Sure, sure. Um, so we have quite a few different programs. Uh, we have Coding Basics, which is free. And in Coding Basics, so this is what we call Level Zero. Level Zero Coding Basics is completely free. Um, you can join in. Uh, what you do there is you learn to build in basic, basic, no computational thinking. It's fully designed HTML, CSS, uh, and Tailwind. You will build your personal website and also uh, a clone in Airbnb, okay? And number two, then you will move. And by coding basics, it's just really just an intro. You, you wouldn't be job ready with this, but it gives you some form of support and understanding in terms of what is technology, what is coding, and also gives you free access to our community, right? We have a community, we have a social learning platform that we will invite you in for our weekly events and all that. Then next level, we have coding fundamentals where we are very, very, very focused on. Like I mentioned just now, the number one thing to have, the number one skill to have is not a certain technology, but it's the ability to learn, right? So then we have coding fundamentals where we give you very solid coding fundamentals that uh, then allows you to move on and learn any other technology very fast from front end to back end or whatever, right? So coding fundamentals is that thing that helps you think computationally and solve problems. And Coding Fundamentals is currently, we have a promo code right now. It's, uh, you can use the promo code Early Sigma, E-A-R-L-Y-S-I-G-M-A, Early Sigma for 30% off. Um, it's around um, 1.5K ringgit, right? And then once you're done with Coding Fundamentals, you will move on to level two courses, which we, are, we split into front end, back end, or cloud. Or you can buy all of it for a full stack, right? So full stack is gonna cost 6,000 ringgit, and uh, full stack is where you learn everything. But if your, your, if your goal is to just land a job, right? If your, if your goal is to land an entry level job, I would suggest, even though it's not good for my sales, I would suggest you to just pick one. Either pick front end or pick back end or pick cloud after you're coding fundamentals, right? And um, so uh, I think front end, back end and cloud, they're all around 3000 ringgit and they're inclusive of coding fundamentals already. So it's just another small top up to get the whole thing. And that one is the one where we really, really, really give you the shortest path to a job. Instead of learning everything, which is very scary and often a very long commitment, you learn whatever it takes just to get an entry level job. And then everything else, I believe you learn way faster on the job. So my mission is not to get you from you know, a 5K job to a 50K salary. No, my mission is to get you from zero to entry level job. Entry level in whatever country you apply for. So let's say Malaysia is 3K ringgit, Singapore is 3k sing dollar and you know my goal is to really unlock malaysia as the talent pool for the rest of the world and you know any forward thinking startups who don't mind hiring um people with no degrees curious to know what is the entry level salary for us um it depends on the company if you're in silicon valley it's crazy it's absolutely crazy you go up to like 150k usd per year or more even right. for entry um, level 150k yep, yep. usd Definitely doable. Okay. I know people are doing that. I know people making, with one year of experience, making 250K USD plus stock options, right? It's because the demand is just so freaking high right now, especially in the US where there's funds, right? So yeah, I think that answers the question. And sometimes they, they do allow you to work remotely as well, right? You don't have to like fly all the way to the US. You can just do it in Malaysia. Oh. Yeah, I mean, most of the time they wouldn't really go for remote in Malaysia because of the time zone difference. So I would say if you're aiming for remote, aim for people near your time zone like Singapore, Singapore Australia. Maybe. Yep, definitely, definitely. And Singapore entry level is around 5k sing. And I, 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 I speak to a lot of Singaporean founders or tech leads all the time when I told them about Sigma School's ability to churn out entry level. Huh? So this is not like crazy good guys, these are entry level guys who are able to build your know, entry level requirements. 
they got so excited about the pitch and they, they straight away signed up to be our hiring partner. So uh, we have a lot of plans in line. We're still very new, but we have huge, massive plans to grow. And, you know, we have to start from our Malaysian roots. Okay, great. So thanks, Derek, for coming onto the show. Check out Sigma School down below, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, guys.